my goodness. And to explain why they're not meeting those. Spoon more. Spooky cookies! Just roll out Pillsbury sugar cookies, cut, bake and decorate, then feed them to your goblins! <laughs> so much fun there! Scary! <laughs> Top Copsy is brought to you in part by New Orange Flavored Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. Bill Giaconetti is an old-fashioned beat cop. On foot patrol, you get to know everybody. Exactly the kind you want when things get hot. You know the rules. And it doesn't get hotter than the next Top Cops. The For a natural pick-me-up, it's high-energy triple ginseng formula in caplet, liquid, and... Kenneth Gurley was convicted of assault with a deadly weapon. He was also convicted of being an armed career criminal. The penalty? Life without parole. Debbie Carson was found guilty of possession of marijuana. She jumped bond, but was rearrested and sentenced to four years. Panji Goodson's charges were dismissed for insufficient evidence. Nick Andros is still a member of the Tulsa Police Department and lives there with his wife, Christy, and their new son. Tyrone Caldwell was sentenced to 15 years on two counts of kidnapping. He served eight and was released from prison on January 18, 1990. Andrea Huff left police work in 1988 and has moved to Los Angeles, California, where she is pursuing a career as a writer. in the parking lot and parked right in front of the door. It was drizzling, the ground was wet, and it was cold. It was now about 2 o'clock in the morning. I was glad Bear was there. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. All units, first team is going in. What is it? I don't know. I just don't feel it's going to go right. Okay. I respect your opinion. Happy? Alfredo sent us for the stuff. We had run into a problem right there, because Bear and I had served a search warrant on Pangy's residence a year before. And although she didn't go to jail, several people did. I wasn't sure if she recognized us. Come on in. That's my friend, Debbie. I'm Nick. Uh, it's Bear. So, what's happening? You called, said the stuff was here. What stuff? The crank? We don't have it. But we can get you some. Now, what do you want? In Oklahoma, it doesn't matter what you deliver. You're looking at the same consequences. Five years to life. They agreed to sell us a gram for $120, and if we liked that, they'd sell us an eight ball, which is one eighth of an ounce for $350. We told them we could handle that. Pangy said she had to go get it. Pangy left and went next door to another motel, leaving Bear and I with Debbie. She was gone maybe 10 or 12 minutes. I positioned myself by the door so when it opened, we'd be able to do the transaction there so Christy and Steve would have a visual on me. But instead of dope, Pangy came back with a surprise for us. A six foot, one inch, 200 pound guy named Kenneth Gourley. Who the hell's that? Must be the guy with the dope. underneath my chin. A single shot, 20 gauge shotgun on our last inch sling. He had to cock it before it would fire. I'd been involved in shootings before, but nothing this personal. 
I'd never killed anyone or even discharged my gun. I knew I needed to get him back outside the door so the backup could see the world's gone to hell. 1033, officer needs help. When I reached down, I felt a handgun in his belt. He had a 357 Magnum, and I thought, great. Now we have two guns. I got thinking, this isn't how I want to die. I'd seen people get killed by a shotgun, and I didn't want to lay dead in a parking lot and have people see me like that. I didn't want anyone to call my parents halfway across the country with news like that. I could hear the hammer click forward, but it just wasn't striking the shell completely. But I heard a click. No report. Click. No report. And all the while we were wrestling, I never thought I was going to die. But I was scared to death that I was going to be paralyzed. Because every time that shotgun hit me in the lower back, I was just waiting for the pain. I thought, if this gun goes off, I'll never walk again. Please! Christy always wore a great big diamond ring, and I always remember seeing that thing flash across my eyes. I knew then that help had finally arrived. It's over! Come on, Nick. I almost shot him. I mean, it was that close. I wanted to kill him. What stopped me was knowing he was restrained, as weird as that sounds. But he couldn't even defend himself. I guess that's the difference between good guys and bad guys. Nick, you okay? It never bothered me again until I had to testify in court. I showed the jury how the shotgun was placed under my neck and tried to tell them what had happened, and then it bothered me. I got goosebumps telling the story. Christy and I started seeing each other around March of 87, six months later. We were really good friends, and when she transferred from the unit, we started dating and it went from there. Today, we're married and have an 11-month-old son. When we come back, Sergeant Andrea Huff and the nine women and children held hostage. Huff and a cop's personal moment of truth. Most police forces have a motto that reads something like, to protect and serve. And you go into the job because you want to help people, to do what you can to protect them. Sometimes you have to resort to physical force, but more often you depend on the force of your own personality. And sometimes the people you help are causing the problem in the first place. I was Charlotte, North Carolina's first black female sergeant. On the 20th of May, 1982, I'd already worked a full shift and spent a long evening with my friends. My head had barely hit the pillow when the phone rang. Hello. Sergeant Huff, please. Speaking. You're a woman? Yes. Uh, Sergeant, this is the Chief's office. We have a hostage situation at the Hunter House, Crittenden Home for Unwed Mothers. We need you. I think there's been some mistake. You're not the hostage negotiator? No, I, I mean, I've taken the course, the introductory course, but I haven't gotten the results yet. Well, the Chief says you're it. You don't understand. I never... get there fast, Sarge. <laughs> I had finished the course 10 days earlier and was awaiting the results of my psychological test. Those tests would show if I was suited for formal training. I could have been the worst person for the job. Nobody knew yet. I wondered what would happen if I said the wrong thing and somebody got killed. What if I wasn't paying attention in class and someone got hurt? I kept thinking, why me, Lord? They've been waiting for you. They're over there. Sergeant! Get down, he's got a gun! I'm here to negotiate with him. Well, who's in charge here? Captain Sloop. He's setting up a command post in the next building. Commander Kilman's on the way. Well, what can you tell me? Well, the guy's name is Tyrone Caldwell, but he prefers to be called Ty. You've been talking to him? A little. We've been here since 10. When he clammed up, we called for you. He's in the kitchen. How many hostages? Nine. Five women, four babies. You want to talk to me? Guess that's what I'm here for. Right on Frank. Ty? Ty? My name is Andrea. I'm with the Charlotte Police, and I'm here to help you. Nobody can help me! Ty, nobody's been hurt yet. We can still work this out. I'm going to do everything I can to get you and anybody else out without getting hurt. I promise I won't lie to you. 
You gotta promise the same. I won't mess you around. I got enough problems here. I need a sign. I need to know you're telling me the truth. What kind of a sign? Send out one of the hostages. Another thing I'd learned was that you never give the hostage taker anything unless he gives you something in return. Hi. That something must be a hostage. Okay. Just one. She'll tell you everything's cool in here. Then she's coming back. No way, Ty. I can't send her back. If you let her go, you're telling me you want to resolve this. handgun and a butcher knife. All the other hostages were still okay. I thanked Ty for setting her free and asked him if we could start negotiating by phone. He finally agreed. At the time, we didn't have cellular phones, so he called the command post we'd set up in an adjoining building, and for the next several hours, we just talked. Bye, bye, bye. I ain't spoken to you longer than I've spoken to anybody in my life. Yeah. Are you sure you're not hungry? No. My family. I've been in a lot of trouble. They think I'd hurt her. Ah, oh, the keys are in there. 